So I think we need to take a moment and just reflect on this for a second and just put this into historical perspective. Allergy didn't used to exist. So this is what I mean when I say it's like the new normal. We slide into this place of complacency because we just see it all around us, so we think it's normal. So when I take my kids to the pediatrician, my kids are better now, by the way, healthy, thriving. When I take them to the pediatrician and the nurse comes in, does like the, you know, the annual checkup, and the nurse is like, all right, well, what are your children's allergies? And I say, they don't have any. And she's like, no, really, really, what are your children's allergies? Because every child that comes into that office has an allergy, and she doesn't believe me. She thinks I'm just like, you know, proud mama hiding the allergies or something, you know, but this is the new norm. But if you go back just 100 years, there was no such thing as anaphylaxis. It didn't exist. In the very, very rare case in the historical record, you might have seen anaphylaxis from a bee sting. But that was exceedingly rare, and that's all that's documented in the historical record. Now, anaphylaxis is every day and common. So we need to go back and look at sort of the history of this. You have the development of kind of environmental allergies in the latter part of the 19th century, and mostly among the wealthy. Um, and then you don't see an anaphylactic reaction. And again, anaphylactic is that life-threatening response, allergic response. It's when your throat closes and you, can't, you have breathing problems and you can die. So anaphylaxis, the actual term, was coined in 1902 by a scientist who actually created anaphylaxis when he took meat, injected it into dogs, and then fed the dogs the same meat. The dogs ate it, had an anaphylactic reaction, and died. So that's when the, the term was coined. Then we start seeing in humans this, this anaphylactic reaction. Around the 1930s, you start seeing something called serum sickness, and that was when you had um, a diphtheria toxin injected, and people would have a response to it, and they would get sort of an allergic reaction, and that was called serum sickness. So you see a little bit of that. But there's no food allergies, no food allergies like we see with anaphylaxis today. In the post-World War II era, we had the development of penicillin. Mostly it was injectable in the beginning, and then you have the development of penicillin allergies. So by the middle of the century, you have four million people with penicillin allergies. That Some of them are anaphylactic. Then you get sort of up towards the 1980s, and you start seeing more and more people and children with anaphylactic allergies to food. Again, this is new and it didn't exist, but any parent who's out there with a child who's diagnosed with an anaphylactic food allergy just thinks it's kind of part of what happens, that it's always been around. No one starts, stops to think about how this developed or where it came from, or the fact that it's new. So now we're at the point where we have 50,000 anaphylactic reactions to food every year, 150,000 um, anaphylactic reactions in general, and that's to a variety of things. Medications are one of the top ones, penicillins, foods. And we see all of these kinds of reactions happening concurrently with the rise of all these neuro neurodevelopmental disorders, ADHD, ASD, sensory processing disorder, and of course, all the other chronic inflammatory conditions they mentioned. So, how do we talk about food allergies. A lot of public health authorities look at charts like this and say, yes, yes, we do have a problem here. We have a rise in allergies, but that's what the graph looks like. Kind of makes you feel like, oh, it's a little bit of a problem, but it's okay. Everything's going to be all right, because it's really not, not too bad. This is um, a chart spanning 1997 to 2007, but this is what we need to be looking at, is charts that look like this. Every single one of these chronic inflammatory conditions has a chart that looks like this, a hockey stick. What the hockey stick is telling you is something changed during this time period that is precipitating these symptoms in people. So now we have 550 emergency room visits a day in this country for anaphylactic reactions. Every three minutes, somebody goes to the ER because they ingested food, which is supposed to nourish us, not kill us. They ingest food, and they have some kind of anaphylactic or otherwise serious allergy reaction. So again, going back to my experience as a new mom and why we are so complacent, 
We're so complacent because it feels normal. Picture yourself being a new mother or a new father in, and you're in a, a group of other parents with new babies and you're all sitting around and you're talking about what's going on every day with your child. Uh, oh yeah, well, you know, little Billy couldn't tolerate breast milk so we put him on Neocate, which is a special formula. It seems to be going all right. Or, you know, the other conversations are like, yeah, I can't get Cindy to go to the bathroom. She's been on Miralax for two years to try and get her to poop because she can't poop. And then the other mom chimes in, is like, oh yeah, I use Miralax every day too. Thank God for Miralax because, you know, it's doing what we need it to do. Or you take it to the next level and the, the parent's talking about their elementary school children and, oh yeah, I had to put Tommy on Ritalin because he's having a really hard time focusing. It seems to be helping. I mean, these are the conversations that are happening every day. The medications are so prevalent. Every child is on something. So you know what? It feels normal. If you're a parent, you're not too, too concerned because your peers are all doing the same things with their children. We've got to snap out of this. We've got to remain aware of the fact that this is new. This is not something that's been around forever. When you see a child who has eczema all over their body, it's not normal. It is not okay. How many babies have you seen with these red cheeks? And they're like, oh, it's so rosy and cute. It's not rosy and cute, it's eczema. It's an inflammatory reaction. It's a symptom that something's out of balance in their bodies. So, what is it? What's doing it? Why are our babies so sick? This is the most underreported epidemic of our times. No one's talking about it. It's of epic proportions, and there are very specific things causing it. But the problem is, there are so many very specific things causing it that most people don't even know how to talk about it. 